What's that one like? It's like a big splodge. Is that still rubbery as well? Yeah, yeah, well. It'll be interesting to see what's happened in the pot. Yes, there's a lot, gone, there's a lot, lot more heat. A lot more heat and it might just be we need we need to get the gun on it. So we're just pulling these little bits of tape off around our resin repairs and the epoxy is still a little bit rubbery. We're not quite sure why. Richard was just saying he was really careful when he mixed it up uh, to make sure we got the, uh, the ratio right. But it, it's been cold here the last couple of days. It just feels rubbery, so perhaps leave it for a few more days and if it doesn't set up, we'll have to drill them out and do them again. So we're just down in the workshop looking at the epoxy mix. So this was the bucket that we mixed it in. It's quite big, really, for the amount of epoxy that we used. And Richard was just saying it's still really rubbery. Yeah. So that's over hardened, I think. Is it? One of the symptoms of over hardening. And when we, I mean, we used it the week before, didn't we? Yes. Uh, on the bulkheads, and that was set absolutely rock hard. Rock hard, yeah. So I think because I only mixed 100 mil, maybe I just, too much hardener, maybe. I guess some sort of pots and redo it. Yeah. Yeah, not there you, go. you live and learn. You live and learn. Not a problem for today. We'll, it's doing the job. It's keeping the deck uh, waterproof, isn't it? And then we'll just drill them out and do them again. So we're just working on this ceiling webbing today so we want to get this side finished off we've already got this side piece with a crank in it that we've cut and that will go on this side here and then we just need these little infill pieces but what we're going to do is we've got these 100 millimeter infills that we've already cut but we're just chatting and we we're saying actually if we're going to have an led strip light through here and then a pad each side we need plenty of sort of landing space if you like for the pad to go on to we just think 100 mil is going to be a little bit tight so we're going to extend these out we're going to cut these at 150 so six inches wide so we need to cut all of those and then cut all of these as well and we'll just use the original ones that we've done we use those as templates <laughs> recut all those pieces in the wider 150 millimeters or six inches so that'll give us far more landing space now for our pads um, and we'd actually got a bit carried away one of these had already been glued I don't know why we glued it now uh, you can see here it's uh, bonded onto here but we managed to separate it and then Richard just run the saw down here so we've got a nice clean edge again so we can reuse that So in with a new wider piece of lightweight plywood, checking we have nice tight gaps and then using stainless steel screws to hold in place. This is just a dry fit, so we will need to remove again for the final bond and fix. Once we are happy, everything fits. Using a handsaw, we make a few minor adjustments to the frame so that we can fit the piece over the doorway. We then carry on and fit the final pieces, making sure everything lines up perfectly, as this will make fitting the vinyl ceiling pads and lighting a lot easier when we get to that stage.
Okay, so the spider frame is now all done on this side. Just got one piece to go in here, but we'll do that afterwards because we have to cut an angle on it for the wardrobe, but everything else is in. We've just temporary screwed these up into place, and that means that we can drop this down and then we can get in here for tabbing and glassing, which will be great. So what we're gonna do now, switch gears and move on to the saloon. So same deal really, other than we're gonna put the supports for the padding in a slightly different place. So rather than going on the underside, we're actually gonna go flush with the bottom here and that's just to maintain headroom. So if I just get my little sample here of timber, so rather than going like that, which kind of is what we did in the front cabin, we're actually gonna come flush sort of like that. And that just means we just maintain the headroom then going through here, which would be nice. That gains us what, good 20 millimeters, three quarters of an inch headroom. So that's, uh, that's the plan. So what we'll do now is we'll get some timbers cut. So we've got some strips cut already, so we'll just cut them to length and drop them into the areas where we need the support for the padding. So here I'm just cutting a short piece of plywood to fit inside the ceiling frame, making sure they're a tight fit so they stay in place. This ceiling is tricky because we're not working to any plans and we need to make sure we have enough support for the ceiling pads whilst also thinking about lighting and the aesthetics of the ceiling. Remember, we have no experience of doing anything like this before, so for us, it's a real voyage of discovery. Then it's onto the forward cabin where we can epoxy and screw the ceiling frame to the forward bulkhead, tidying up any excess epoxy with a stirring stick. So Rich has mixed up some thickened epoxy down at the end here and just put three stainless steel screws. You can see those in there and we've left that overnight. No problems with the epoxy, that's set up nicely. And then we've moved back into the saloon area and started to fit some of the carrier frame here for the upholstery pads. So these are just pushed into position at the moment. We're just sort of cutting them and then pushing them up and they will need gluing and fixing properly. And we're just gonna move over now to the kitchen or the galley and we need to put some framing in here to carry, again, the upholstery pads. And we're also having to start to think about uh, lighting is one thing that we've got to think about. So we've marked a position here for an LED strip light to go through there. We've got one here and one here. So we'll effectively have three rows through here and then probably another row through there. So this will be LED strip light that will be recessed uh, into the upholstery pads. Lots of things to think about. We've also got to think about uh, cabling uh, for electrical fittings, uh, again, for lighting. Uh, also for going up into the cockpit. And then also we've got to think about how to get the pipe work through for the demisters as well. So we think that will probably go up. We've got some room up here that we can run the pipes across. Uh, but if anybody knows how they did it in the original factory boat, that would be really handy to know because we're not quite sure how they, um, how they did it. So if anybody know that, just pop it in the comments and that would be really useful. Now it's over to the galley area, where again we need to think about lighting, as this area will need to be well lit. These lengths of plywood are longer and will carry the high level cupboards, so we'll also need to add additional support to make sure they can carry the weight. has just routed out a uh, carrier that goes on the end of this door here so he's just recessed that just use the track saw to do that and then basically what we're looking to do is drop this onto the door here so that will give us something to carry the ceiling on this side 
and on this side we'll have something to fix, fix rather some sort of trimming pad uh, but we've just got to make this fit so at the moment when this moulding's been cut for the doorway you can see it's quite rough here so just masked it off what we'll do actually with some and it's actually catching that timber that British Cut's catching here so we'll just trim that off what we'll do actually was just use the sander with 40 grit on and that'll be gone in two minutes bit of head scratching so we're just now trying to work out how to timber out or frame out this back piece here done the two ceilings we've had to take this one just down temporarily it's just mocked up for now and um, obviously we've done the cutting here so just use the sander just to trim all this edge and done a little bit more work on that now so finish this side as well so just come all the way across just masked off some masking tape 40 grit on the rotary sander and then just work up to the uh, masking tape and this is all nicely cleanly cut now and also you can't catch your fingers on this edge it was quite sharp before with the fiery glass but that's now nice and smooth so a lot easier to work with uh, Richard has fashioned a piece of timber that goes in here it's been re rebated on the back edge so it just slides in behind this fiber glass and that sort of effectively creates a carrier piece that then carries this piece of timber across here and we're just trying to work out now how to do this bit here so we think what we'll do is we'll put another piece along the bottom here which we're just going to cut now and then we'll be able to screw through onto this piece of frame here this frame we can bond into place and also screw through into this bulkhead uh, and we'll also need to just create a, a carrier piece down at the bottom end there and this will effectively become I guess the splashback area really uh, obviously cupboards high level cupboards up here and a splash back along here and we've also cut the other side as well so again rebated piece of timber and this forms the doorway now and gives us something to work to so we've got obviously this piece of timber runs in this is nice and flush and then we'll be able to create a pad that goes down the edge of this so a nice shaped piece of um, pleather pad we'll go and cloak all of this I'm guessing this will probably be some sort of timber or something on the inside and then a pad here that's all yet to be determined. Lots of things to think about. We've got a vent here. So there is a vent on the original boat that comes through from the cockpit. So we've just got to allow for that as well. Uh, and also just got to think about perhaps any sort of sockets or anything like that, that we might be going, might be going in here just to make sure that we've got enough depth to work to. Um, remove this scruffy bit of timber off there. That just needs cleaning up. But yeah, we're making good progress.
okay that's going to be a wrap for today's video guys hope you enjoyed today's video if you did give us a thumbs up and we'll see you on the next one